Hey guys, welcome to Coding with Hanya. In this video, we will discover the fundamentals of objects and classes in Java. So before we get started, let's understand the basic meaning of an object. An object is a real world or conceptual entity that has properties and behaviors. Let's demonstrate this by using dogs. To create an object, we need two things, properties and actions. Properties, also known as attributes or variables, define the characteristics or data associated with the object. We're trying to represent a dog, so our properties can include attributes like the dog's breed, color, name, and age. These attributes can be given values to build a unique dog. I'm gonna make this dog a corgi, and it's gonna be white and brown. I'm gonna name it Momo, like my friend's real life corgi, and set its age to three years old. Now the second component to objects are actions, also known as methods. They represent the behaviors or actions that an object can perform. Since we're trying to represent a dog, our actions can include things that dogs do, like barking, running, eating, and sleeping. Now that we got the gist of what an object is, let's understand what a class is. A class is a blueprint or template that defines the structure and behavior of objects. The class would define the common properties and actions that all dog objects can have. Our previous work perfectly represents a class. We have the common properties and actions that all dog objects can have defined, and with it, we have a template that can be used to create instances also known as copies of different kinds of dogs. In order to create objects, we need to have the class that will tell us how to build them. So using the properties defined in the dog class, I'm going to build my second dog, which will be a beagle. I'm gonna go ahead and finish creating my beagle by filling out the attributes provided by the dog class. Now, you might be wondering, what's the purpose of the method in the class? The class contains the method definitions that specify the actions the object can perform. So now that we have an idea of how everything works, let's write our dog class using actual Java syntax. The class declaration for a class named dog in Java, which is stored in the file dog.java, consists of the following parts. The keyword public specifies the visibility or accessibility of the class. The keyword class is used to declare a class in Java. And finally, dog is the name of the class. It adheres to the Java naming conventions where class names begin with an uppercase letter. The class structure embodies three fundamental components, properties, constructor, and methods. These elements form the core building blocks of a robust and efficient program. The first component you'll come across are properties. Properties, also known as instance variables, are variables within a class that hold unique data for each object. They represent an object's attributes, such as a dog's name, breed, and age. These properties store specific values and define the object's current state and characteristics. We will be declaring three instance variables, name, breed, and age. Our instance variables will be used to store data related to a dog. The name variable would hold the name of the dog, the breed variable would store the breed of the dog, and the age variable would hold the age of the dog. The second component we will come across in classes is the constructor. In order to create a dog object, we use a special method called the constructor. You can think of the constructor as a factory that uses the instance variables defined in the class to build dogs according to our specifications. It takes the information we provide and uses it to set the initial characteristics of the dog to create our desired dog. Let's take a second to analyze the constructor syntax. We can see that the constructor creates an object by setting the specifications we pass in equal to the object's instance variables. It's important to note that constructors share the same name as the class. And unlike regular methods, they do not have a return type and are primarily utilized for object initialization. Now let's get started writing the dog class constructor by replacing the term class name with dog. Now remember, constructors share the same name as the class, so make sure to capitalize your class names. So the class name dog will be written with the capital D. We 
We already defined our instance variables previously as name, breed, and age. The constructor, however, allows us to provide the dog's name, breed, and age as inputs, which then get assigned to the instance variables in the object. Our parameters will be name, breed, and age. Now we'll move on to our instance variables. But wait, what is this, this keyword we see here? Since our parameters and instance variable names are the same, we need to use the this keyword to indicate that it's an instance variable and not a parameter. I'm gonna go ahead and replace the instance variables and parameters with the correct names. Our completed constructor will look like this. Let's go ahead and reiterate the importance of the this keyword now that we have a full view of our code. By using the this keyword, we are telling Java that we are referring to the instance variables of the object itself, as you can see highlighted here. The variables without the this keyword in the constructor refer to the parameters, and those values will be assigned to the corresponding instance variables. The last component to classes are the methods. More specifically, non-static methods. Non-static methods are special functions that belong to a particular object. They can do things or perform actions based on the values of that object's variables. There are three main types of non-static methods. Action methods, getter methods, and setter methods. We're going to start with action methods. An action method represents an action or behavior of an object. It's a command that makes objects do something. We're going to write an action method called bark, which will make the dog bark by printing out woof woof when called. Next up are getter methods. A getter method is like a helper that gets information for us. It's used to get the value of the object's properties. It's important because it lets us access the object's hidden data without changing it directly. The getter method is a convenient way to retrieve the value of a specific property or information stored in an object. It follows the pattern you see here. Get property name is the method name, typically starting with get followed by the property name you want to retrieve. Inside the method, you simply return the value of the property using the return keyword. Pretty simple. Let's write a getter method that'll allow us to access our dog object's name. The name data type is string, so let's make our return type string. Our property name will be name because we're trying to get the dog's name. So let's call the method getName. We only want to retrieve name, so let's simply return the name. And finally, we have our setter methods. The setter method sets or updates the value of an instance variable of an object. It's like having a special function that lets you update the value whenever you need to. It allows external code to modify the value by accepting a parameter and assigning it to the variable. The setter method follows the pattern you see here. The void indicates that the method doesn't return any values. Set property name is a method name typically starting with set followed by the property name to modify. Parameter represents a value to be assigned or updated for the property. Within the method, the line property name equals parameter assigns a value of the parameter to the object's instance variable. I'm going to go ahead and create a setter method for the dog's age because it's the only attribute that'll change over time. So my property name will be age. The name of the parameter will be age with an int data type. We will use the this keyword again to show that we're referring to the instance variable. And set the parameter equal to it. With the instance variables, constructor, and methods written, we are finally done writing our dog class. Now let's go ahead and create a bunch of cute dog objects. Objects are created in the main method in Java to kickstart the program and make the objects available for use throughout the code. By creating objects in the main method, we establish a central place to initialize and control the object, making them accessible and usable in different parts of our code. When we create an object in Java, we're essentially creating a new instance of a class. Let's go ahead and analyze the object initialization syntax. We can see that the object is created using the new keyword, followed by a call to the class's constructor. 
the new keyword tells Java to allocate memory for the object and initialize its instance variables. The class's constructor is called to initialize a newly allocated object. The constructor sets the initial values of the object's instance variables. The created object is assigned to a variable, allowing us to refer to and work with the object in our code. Let's get started creating our dog object by creating our dog variable and naming it dog1. After the new keyword, we want to call our constructor signature from the dog class, and then we replace a parameter with values needed to create our unique dog. I'm going to make the same dog from our previous example, so it's going to be a corgi named Momo who's 3 years old. And there we have it, dog1 is created within the main method. Using the same object initialization syntax, we can go ahead and create another dog. I'm going to use my second dog example and create a two-year-old beagle named Kiko. And just like that, we've created two adorable dogs. Now let's go ahead and make our dogs bark by calling our action method bark. To call non-static methods, you just need to specify which object is calling the method like this. I want to make dog1 bark, so I'm going to call dog1 and the bark method like this. Now, why do we have to specify the object? Why can't we just call bark by itself the way we do with static methods? Well, if I call bark without specifying the object, our dogs will be confused and not know which dog is being asked to bark. So it is vital to specify your object before calling a non-static method. So by fixing our syntax and specifying dog1, we're able to make our corgi bark. Now I want to make dog2 bark as well, and I can do so by calling dog2 and the bark method. We've been using the term non-static quite a bit, so let's take a second to understand what it means. To get a better understanding of non-static methods, let's compare them to the static methods we typically write in our main class. The first obvious difference is the method signature. The static method has a static keyword, where non-static methods do not. The second difference is that static methods are called without creating an object where a non-static method requires an object to be created before calling it because it belongs to individual objects created from a class. So the main difference between static and non-static methods is that static methods belong to the main class itself, while non-static methods belong to the individual objects created from the class. Now let's continue calling the methods we wrote and use our getter method getName to access dog1's name. I'll also need a print statement to print it out. Inside the printout, I'll specify that I want dog1's name by calling dog1 along with the method getName. And there we go, dog1's name, Momo, is printed. Next, let's use the setAge method. It's Kiko's birthday and he's turning 3. I'm going to want to set his original age of 2 to 3. I'll do that by calling dog2 and the method setAge and pass the number 3 as the parameter. I then want to access his age to make sure it was changed properly, so I call get age and then print it out. And there we have Momo and Kiko celebrating Kiko's third birthday. Great job! We're all done creating our dog class and objects. With your newly acquired skills, you can now go ahead and join us for part 2 of the Objects and Classes video series where we'll demonstrate the creation of a game utilizing multiple classes. Thank you so much for watching and if you like this video and would like to see more, please like and subscribe.